Hey there, winos, this is Vince.Wine, and today I am so excited because I finally got my hands on Mary J. Blige Sun Goddess Wines. You know, these are really hard for me to get my hands on, so they must be pretty popular. In case you haven't heard, Grammy award-winning singer, songwriter, actress, producer, philanthropist, and all-around amazing person, Mary J. Blige has teamed up with the Fontanelle family from a wine-producing region in northern Italy. These are supposed to be wines of terroir and excellent sense of place. So I'm really excited to pop the cork on these today and just see what kind of quality is in the bottles. Let's check it out on today's Wine Lab Celebrity Edition. Okay, here they are, and they are such beautiful bottles, but before I talk a little bit more about that, let's actually learn a little bit more about where these wines came from. All right, before we pop those corks, let's check out the website. Right on, so it starts with that really beautiful label top there with Mary J. Blige. I think that might be her face. That should be her face. Who else's face would it be? In that sort of golden album cover, but also, again, that sort of sun-kissed look to it. So there's Sun Goddess by Mary J. Blige, Fontanelle Family. So this is definitely a passion project for Mary J. Blige, and she connected with the Fontanelle family here from Friuli, Venetia, Giulia. I think I pronounced that correctly. And one thing I have to tell you that really impresses me is that she really cares a lot about terror you're going to see that come up a lot in this website. Another really cool thing here is the presentation. I love how pretty these bottles are. They reflect Mary J. Blige's music background with the album cover and then also just all that gold that reflects that sort of sun-kissed look. Really beautiful. And here she tells a little bit about the story of Sun Goddess and where that comes from. You can check it out yourself by visiting sungoddesswines.com. Just a little bit about who she is, philanthropist, producer. My goodness, she is all kinds of wonderful things. A little bit about the Fontanelle family, that they're from the northern Italy region with generations of winemaking history there. And then here it is, a little bit about the terroir. You can see exactly where, what part of Italy this is, which is actually near the Piedmonte area where Stella Rosa is from, that northern Italy. And yeah, a lot about that sort of minerality. Here's some of that, the stones that are found in the terroir there. And then we get into a nice risque picture, of course, of good old MJB just discussing what inspired her to do this. And oh, okay, hello legs. Uh, <laughs> okay, I guess I spoke too soon on the risque. Up, oh, and here's how she looks at me after I say that. <laughs> yeah, so these wines are about $15 and $20 respectively. I bought a, a two pack that was $40. So they're really reasonably priced and I'm just really excited here because again, they care about that terroir and they've got a really gorgeous, elegant look to it. So I'm hoping what's inside these bottles is just as elegant and get a load of that gorgeous vineyard. Okay, one thing is for sure. If you want to make a small fortune in the wine world, you have to start with a large fortune, which is part of the reason why you see a lot of celebrities or doctors and athletes and such start making wines because they already have that fortune that they can build on to start a winery or a wine label. And with that, let's pop the corks on these wines and see if they're worth all that hype. All right, we're gonna start with the Sauvignon Blanc. And as we do, I just wanna admire the label for a moment. So it looks like it's got one of her, like her face right there as a Grammy award or uh, on, on top of a gold record, of course. And beautiful capsule and everything, really pretty MJB on there and on the top of the capsule as well. Just gorgeous presentation here. And look at that color as it glows in the light. I really, really love the color of this Sauvignon Blanc and just, yeah, that sun-kissed idea is totally apparent in the presentation, really, really pretty. Let's pop the cork. Wow, that has such a clean color to it. It is like really, really pure and pretty in the glass with those tiny little bubbles sort of rising to the top. Hopefully that indicates it's going to be a little bit more of a crisp style Sauvignon Blanc, but a really just gorgeous kind of looks like melted gold or like silk in the glass. Really, really gorgeous. Let's get it on the nose. Oh, that is that perfect classic Sauvignon Blanc right away. It's so refreshing. Immediately I get this sort of lemon liminess happening on the nose. Lots of really bright citrus fruit. Now this is from an Italian DOC or Denominación di Controllata, which is basically a certified wine growing region. So I'm hoping to get a good amount of Italian terroir in there. Again, that's that sense of place. Let's get it on the palate. Wow. Okay, this is certainly a wine of elegance. Leave it to Mary J. Blige, of course, but it does have 
class. This is a wine that is both silky and crisp at the same time. As far as mouthfeel, it almost wants to be flabby, but it's not. And it totally rushes in with this crispness at the end that just makes it such a nice, bright treat. It has so much citrus fruit. That for sure is something I confirm on the palate. And yeah, a little bit of that sort of chalky minerality that gives it a lot of complexity. And yeah, I can still taste it. The finish is still going. It's got a super long finish. This is really nice. Okay, one thing is that it is a slight bit of a lighter style body, so I don't know how well this might hold up to some certain food. Totally fish for sure. Things like shrimp, some kind of cool like oyster appetizer. Oh, this would be perfect with oysters. Anything that's a little bit more hearty or that has a lot of like herbaceousness in there. Think like herbs around chicken or something else that you might pair with a sauve blanc. I'm not exactly sure if this would hold up to it. Let me get it back on the palate one more time and see how it goes. Oh man, one thing I can say for it is it is delicious. It's so good. And I gotta tell you, I only spent about $20 on this and I see that you can buy it for even as cheap as $16. So for that price point, it is very, very reasonably priced for what you're getting. This is absolutely a fantastic wine. I'm totally gonna enjoy this tonight with dinner. It's a self-drinking wine. I could have it with nothing else and just enjoy it on its own. Or yeah, I can pair it with lighter fare and be pretty happy with that. Okay, is it possible to be good at everything because MJB, you rock at making wine too. Okay, well that was a pretty good first go. This actually makes me super excited for the next one. Let's get the cork popped on the Pinot Grigio. Okay, one thing you may have noticed so far about this Pinot Grigio is this interesting sort of rosé style color. So is this a rosé? Well, as a matter of fact, the answer is not quite as simple. Check out the label here. You can see that line, Romato. Romato is a style of wine only found in Friuli, Italy, where the Fontanelle family has been making wine for many years. This gorgeous coppering color is a result of specifically Pinot Grigio grapes spending a little bit of time on their skins during fermentation, picking up this really beautiful sort of orange hue. Kind of cool. Yeah, check out that gorgeous color. I mean, it really is very much a peachy color here. And obviously to the naked eye, I would assume this is a rosé. Let's see if it tastes like one. Okay, on the nose. Okay, this wine is also super citrusy on the nose. A little cherry and actually a lot of lemon in there too. It just gives me this sort of like red fruit aromatic. Super fresh and fragrant. Almost like a fresh bouquet of pretty pink and white flowers or something like that. Okay, I can't wait anymore. Let's get it on the palate. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> this wine is also a winner. It enters the palate with this really crisp, bright citrus fruits. And again, that mouthfeel is super crisp and lively on the palate. But then as the finish rushes in, you actually end up with like this silky, fresh melon. It's like this soft, almost all the way to like cantaloupe. It's got this really gorgeous, fresh melon and really silky texture on the finish. And that finish really just starts to envelop after a few seconds on the palate. So it kind of hits you in two stages, that upfront, bright, crisp acidity and citrus fruit. And then that lengthy finish of soft and approachable melon. This makes this a really, really phenomenal wine and maybe one of the better rosés I've had in quite some time, or excuse me, Ramatos. Well, there you have it. That's pretty exciting. I, I have to say that this is some of the best celebrity wine I've probably ever had. Obviously, Mary J. Blige has partnered with a high-end winemaking family with generations of winemaking experience experience, but they really have made a beautiful partnership here because this is a fantastic product. It's something that if it becomes more available, I would certainly like to buy again. The Pinot Grigio Ramado in particular. Is this a good food wine? Um, yeah, I'm sure that it is. I think I'd maybe like to have some prosciutto wrapped melon and a little bit of feta cheese with that. And oh man, with that, I'd be happy all day. But otherwise, this is super self-drinking and both of these wines are extremely good for self-drinking. They're elegant. They look amazing. Again, such a gorgeous presentation and overall, I'm pretty darn happy. Mary J. Blige, why stop at whites and rosé? You gotta make some reds because based on the quality of this, that's gonna be your next award. If you liked what you saw here today, please leave me a like, that helps a lot. Don't forget to share this video with your wine friends. And until next time, winos, drink safe and drink well. Cheers. And with that, let's pop the corks on these wines and see if they're worth all that hype. Mm-hmm. <laughs>